Hi, I'm Otto, and I'm gonna show you how to copy paste like a pro. These tips are specifically for GNOME and Linux users because most of the keyboard shortcuts I'm gonna show is stuff that's built in into GNOME and this is pretty handy because you don't need to install anything to benefit from these tips. Now copy pasting is a quite old invention in the history of computers. It was invented by Larry Tesler in 1974 and I recommend you check out the history of Larry Tesler because he pioneered many computer user interface stuff we still use today. Now I hope everybody knows Ctrl C and Ctrl V, pretty universal and basic commands to copy and paste, but there's more to it. Now I'm going to teach you nine tips how to copy paste like a pro. So let's start with the basics. Ctrl C and Ctrl Shift V, what does that do? So if I select this text here and copy it with Ctrl C and do a regular Ctrl V into another document, then it's gonna paste it with all the formatting it had. You can see the title and the links and everything. But sometimes I don't want to have this formatting because it might mess up stuff. So if I paste with Ctrl Shift V, then it's gonna paste without any formatting. Then actually in Linux, you don't need to even press Ctrl C all the time. It's enough that you select some text like this and then go to another document and press the middle mouse button and it will paste it automatically and it will paste it without formatting. I use the middle mouse button all the time because it's so handy. Then there is Ctrl Shift C. When is that relevant? So if you have a GNOME terminal window and you select something and press Ctrl C, then it's not gonna copy anything because in the terminal window, Ctrl C is reserved for aborting the running process. So you need to press Ctrl Shift C to copy it and then a regular Ctrl V to paste it. Of course, you can also in the terminal window just select something and then with the middle mouse button paste it. Then there are some special things in pasting as well. So if I, for example, copy these comma separated values from here and paste it in a spreadsheet just like this, then it's gonna end up just like text. And this is not useful in the spreadsheet context. However, here is a button for paste formatting and here you can select the split text into columns and it will spread Google spreadsheet is pretty smart to detect automatically that it was commas I wanted this to be split by but you can select here if there is some other separated for separator for the columns and most applications also LibreOffice a calc and others have a similar feature and you can access them from the menu edit and paste special and then select different ways to paste stuff And regarding tables, you might not know that if you copy a table in a spreadsheet application and then go to a GitHub issue or a GitLab issue or whatever system that's using Markdown and paste it here, then it will automatically format as a Markdown table. 
And this is a handy way if you want to enrich your bug reports or issues with tables showing something. You just do the table in a spreadsheet application and then you copy paste it. And it will automatically convert into markdown on GitHub and GitLab issues. Then there is something I do with Control Shift H. And this is actually not built in directly. You need to activate it from GNOME Terminal in Preferences and Shortcuts. You need to make sure that here you have Control Shift H defined in Copy as HTML. So what does this do? If I select here something and do a regular copying of it and then paste it into a document, it's going to look like this. But then if I instead copy this with Control Shift H, it's going to copy it as HTML. And when I paste it to a document that has rich formatting, it will preserve the colors and everything. And if I paste it into an issue, you can see here the raw format is HTML and it will end up looking like this. All right, then this also applies for the GNOME terminal, that if you hold control while selecting something, it's going to make a box selection. So a normal selection is like this. When I drag over the lines, it will select full lines. But if I press Ctrl, then it will look like this. And this allows me, for example, to copy a single column from the terminal. Now I've selected that column, copied it. And then you can see here in the text document that I only got that column on my clipboard. Pretty neat. And then a few tips regarding copying pictures or parts of your screen. So I'm sure everybody are familiar with the print screen button. Let's do a quick demo, demo of that. So if I press print screen, then it's going to make a screenshot of my entire screen and save that to my pictures folder automatically. This happens in GNOME and applies to most other operating systems as well. If I press Alt print screen, then it will make a screenshot of just the window I have open and Shift and print screen will create this cross here. And with the cross here, I can select an area of the screen and that will become the screenshot. Now, I can use all of the three of these and just combine them with Control to get a screenshot directly on the clipboard without having it as a file in between. So, looks like this. Control Shift, print screen. And I can, for example, select this area here. Now it's on my clipboard and I can go to a text document and paste it here and it's directly here as an image. Or I can go to an issue and paste it here and it will automatically upload and then show as an image in the issue. And this is very handy. I use this all the time. Control Shift Print Screen brings up a cross here. I can select an area, it goes immediately on my clipboard, and then I can paste it in another application. Very convenient. It's a great way to enrich your bug reports or issues and make it very obvious for whoever is reading the bug report that what issue or thing you are referring to, referring to because you know 
one picture is worth a thousand words. All right. Well, sometimes you need to record something that's moving, something that's happening, and a static image won't do. Built in into GNOME, there is this screen recorder, which you can activate by pressing Ctrl, Shift, Alt, R. And now you can see that in the top right corner, there is now a red dot, and this indicates that the recording is on. And then I can press Ctrl, Shift, Alt, R again, to end it and if I forget to press that to end it then the maximum duration of a screen recording like this that is going to be 60 seconds and those files end up automatically in the videos folder looks like this well then sometimes making a screen recording of the entire screen is not that convenient you want maybe to highlight some smaller feature like a smaller area. For that, I recommend using an application called Peak. And this is not built in into GNOME, but it's available in most Linux distributions. It's very quick and easy to install. Then I just open it and it looks like this. So it's a window and I can choose the size of the window. And I can see here in a semi-transparent area what I'm going to record. For example, I can put it here and then press record. There is a countdown from three, then the recording starts and then I can go, for example, to the menus and show something. When I stop the recording, it saves it as a GIF by default. And then I have it here in my videos folder. And again, I can, for example, put it in a issue to illustrate something, some bug in the UI or something. This is very convenient and I use this quite frequently. So that was the nine tips. And I recommend you read up on the history of Larry Tesler. It's very interesting. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago, but his legacy for sure still lives on. And uh, he's famous for many innovations in the computer user interface. And one thing he's particularly famous for is that he was against modes. He was, he dedicated a large part of his life on a crusade against modes. So in the 1960s and 70s, it was quite common for applications to have modes. And that was very confusing for users. And anybody who has tried VI or Emacs can probably relate. That makes them quite hard to use. And this Ctrl C and Ctrl V is an example of a modeless operation, a user interface. You can at any given time press Ctrl C and Ctrl V. They will always do the same wherever you are. And now with these tips, I hope you will be much more productive than you used to be. Thanks a lot.